Before we begin the video, I would like to extend a big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Captain Moses, Josh Fix, Future Gaming, I Am A Skull, Zundru Oris, Eyeball Pole, Super Mandible Claw, Kao Komori, Alan Barty, Justin Ashley, Purple Durbington, Nickel805, Jordan Howe, Simone Hornsby, Mighty U. Imson, Victor Vasquez, Shadow X Kills, Lee Runnan, Joven Go Oko, James Butterworth, Justin, Theseon 1111, Red Rosser, Disturbed Guy, Fallen Dragmire, Latanya Young, Zangeli Speckop, Duba Minus, Kiki Rocks, Kill or Be Killed, Chris O. And I would also like to extend a big thank you to our executive producers, The Enemy Hybrid, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, and Bevan Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, click the join button down below next to the subscribe button. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, click the link below in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. Okay, first off, I want to say I'm kind of impressed, but at the same time, I am harshly disappointed. It was a guy. He was on the ground. <laughs> Swag defending Afro. It's. Are you sure hell hasn't froze over? <laughs> Got him! Got him! <laughs> Yar, the plunder be huge, and the pl and the sea be the sea has no. Uh, what was the the sea has no? Mm, Mermaids. That, but the sea has uh, the sea washes away the past or something like that. Oh, I, I don't know. The sea the, has very few creatures that I want to be anywhere near. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I don't. But, know. that's my personal side. Okay, well, CGP Gray, uh, a YouTuber that. Uh, Micah and I are very familiar with, uh, given, uh, you know, uh, we actually came across him around the same time. We're just like, oh, you like CGP Grey, too. And His stuff is always pretty informative. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Grey has always been someone who have, I've always been able to watch his stuff and just be like, damn, that was, like, incredibly informative and, like, precise and to the point, and it, and it, and it honestly, like, accomplished its goal perfectly. Like, I, I like... He's very good about trimming the fat off of content, much unlike us. <laughs> but uh, he's very good about trimming stuff down to where it basically is like, like some of the most like perfectly edited and paced videos you'll ever see. And uh, he actually released two videos, basically on the exact same day. Uh, one of them is How to Be a Pirate, Captain Edition, and How to Be a Pirate, Quartermaster Edition. So... The pirate, you know, the thing... So the, is he actually going to tell us how to be modern pirates? Or no, is he he was, like, he's going to explain... Is he doing, like, back in the day? Back in the privateering, okay. like, days. See, you know? like, uh, it reminded me at first, and I was hoping it might be kind of like uh, a video series. I think it was on Ami, and it was basically, like, impossible, like, nearly impossible situations, but how you would actually be able to possibly accomplish those. And yes. If you did everything exactly right. Like, one of well, them was, like, how to survive a fall from an airplane with if, if your parachute yes. comes out. Well, CGP Grey, he, uh, like, he's really informative. Like, he's about as down-to-earth and as realistic as, like, uh, he drenches himself in realism and just, like, wears it as a badge of honor. And his whole thing is, now... Uh, my fit, one of my favorite videos of his that I usually watch on the regular is Seven Ways to Maximize Your Misery. And he says, he literally says, watch this, do the opposite. You'll see where your problems are, and you'll see how you can, and I'm going to give you ways to where you can fix them. So, yeah. And I watch it every now and again. I shared it, and people seem to like what, what it said. But... <clears throat> How to Be a Pirate, Captain's Edition. We're going to watch these uh, two videos here. We're going to start with the Captain Edition, and then we're going to go to the Quartermaster Edition. So, uh, yeah, let us uh, set sail with uh, Captain Gray on the rusty gear, and uh, here we go. Hello. So you, so you want, want to be, to be a, pirate a pirate alive? Well, well let, let me, me tell, tell you, you, being a pirate be all about branding. branding. Yar, it's, it's a business, business but branding be bringing in the booty. booty. And, and if, if ye be shipping with our jolly crew, ye need love this Jolly Roger. 
Question, is this waving a pirate flag like waving a we are thieves flag? It seems not helpful. This skull and crossbones be more than just a bit of R, look at us. It's plumage prerequisite for plundering. As pirates, we be wanting booty. Booty be licious. But parties protect their booty, preferring it unplundered. So we must plunder asunder, which is a lot of work and risk. Who needs that? See, we want free booty. When we ask for booty, booty to be granted and bounce. But why would a ship just give up? The branding! Plus a surprise <laughs> reveal. You were right. We don't fly the flag for fun. We fly false flags, keeping the Roger hidden for just the right moment. Our ship be lean and mean, and we hide this too. With prey in sight, we billow barrels behind. So though our sails be full, our speed be slow, and we seem fat and full with supplies kept above deck for greater effect. Okay, that's pretty clever. But this be my favorite. A camouflaged hull, painted canvas unfurled to cover the true number of guns. Behold! That looks pretty fake. Yar, it need only look good from afar. The ships be seen at a distance through a looking glass on the high seas. Branding is image, not reality. And empire and merchants do the reverse, carving and painting fake cannon to intimidate. But fake guns don't shoot, now do they? <laughs> so we be sailing slowly along, all how do you do, fellow countrymen? Then, when close enough, the reveal. Cutting our cover, unfurling the flag, ditching the drag, and sullying pantaloons. That's brand. Do it right, and they won't fight. Why, again? I feel like you're not answering this question. Look, think like one of those four seamen sods yonder. Imagine ye be working for the Empire, minding yourself when, surprise, pirates, please present your booty. Ugh, this guy's the worst. Your captain can choose to fight or not, but if ye fight and if ye lose, we will torture crewmen to death while others watch. Oh, that's not jolly. That's not jolly at all. Look, sometimes misguided men will try to hide booty, and we can't have that. We don't want to torture, understand? I scorn to do anyone a mischief when it's not for my advantage, but brands must mean something. And torturing over hidden treasure is quite memorable, which generates effective word of mouth marketing. At least from those who have told us the truth about hidden treasure and thus get to keep their tongues. Ah, so be the sailor's choice. Fight, lose, maybe torture for you, maybe death for you. Pirates get booty anyway. What a hassle for nothing, and we make it so easy to give up. If your captain simply surrenders, we leave everyone alone. No fighting, no torture, just a transference of booty between ships passing on the high seas. On the other hand, you could fight, and you might win, though maybe as less of a man than before, but lose, and you might beg for mercy in the last and longest moments of your life. The flag we raise lets me you know your Jesus. options before loading that cannon. And we have one more surrender incentive. Say the target captain calls his men to fight to protect his booty. That captain is a fool, and probably cruel, treating his men like mule, feeding them gruel while admiring a jewel, the whole crew sick of his rule. When they see our flag and the captain's command, the crew can mutiny, letting us aboard without resistance, and as thanks for their assistance, we be holding a court, a court of the captain where his crew can complain. Knowing this chance corrodes a captain's confidence in command, given the crew's critique of his conduct could conclude his career. It's hilarious! Though the Empire calls us outlaws, we also be angels of vengeance on the high seas. What branding, terror, and mercy, and justice combined. It's beautiful. So, that's the pirate's life. Sure, the Empire's noose will dangle over your head, but you'll have brothers in arms and booty in hand. What say ye? I'd like to talk to that guy before I decide. And that's... And now we're going to go talk to that guy. We're going to go talk to the quartermaster now. So how does this work exactly? If you'd like to be a pirate, you need to understand it is a business. You can't have a crew or a ship or a brand without a business model to support them. But pirate business is like any other. Make a product or provide a service to your customers in exchange for money. Then spend that money on equipment and personnel to make more product for more customers for more money. The difference with Piracy Incorporated is our customers don't wish to be service. No matter. With the correct <laughs> spending on equipment and personnel, the business will service them regardless. Do you have to? 
My boy, if we don't service our customers, someone else will. And the reward for our abstemiousness will be poverty. In our societal and technological environment, an economic niche exists, and this incorporation of pirates fills its shape as whiskey fills a barrel. Such is life, the motions we choose, but the sum of forces upon us. I became a pirate as the gold in this grail chose its form. The both of us, now cogs of this machine that profits on the high seas or perishes. Okay. Profit is income minus expenses, and for a pirate company, income means seizing the biggest booty. <sighs> seizing the biggest treasure, while provoking the least cost-inducing resistance. The captain is more than happy to explain how we accomplished that. <laughs> brand. about branding. Branding built on the foundation of a solid business, mind you. Brands are memorable and battles flashy, but they don't happen without contracts and spreadsheets. Thus, before we set sail, there will be a contract for the voyage. Though we choose not to live under the Empire's law, we still have rules of our own, to which all men have input, and to which all men must agree before setting sail. The contract sets the voting methods, codes of conduct, punishments for violating those codes, distribution of pay, workmen's compensation, etc. Each pirate enterprise is a bit different, but in general it works thusly. There are two elected offices, the captain and the quartermaster. The captain is not our boss, but serves at the pleasure of the crew. If they are unhappy with his strategic decisions, the crew can replace him at any time by a majority vote. There is no term length, with one exception. Battle is no time for democracy. Amidst pandemonium, the decider must be free to decide, but this is the only time the captain cannot be removed. And though our branding may give you the impression the captain is in charge of all things, the quarter master keeps the ship running, overseeing the men, their quarters, their rations, their agreed-upon privileges and punishments executed for contract violations. Everything needed to keep the ship effective and profitable. Quartermaster, Battlemaster, Crew. Now, at the dawn of this new century, a lot of men are qualified to be crew, which means the cost of their labor is low. So you're not going to pay me much? You misunderstand. That you are here tells me you are not interested in traditional employment, working nine to five on a ship of the Empire for minimum wage, staying out of trouble and saving for retirement as banal days pass, eroding the dreams and aspirations of your younger self, leaving you at the end to wonder how it all slipped away. No, your personality matrix, shaped entirely by your genetics and your environment, tend you to engage in risk-taking. What's genetics? Doesn't matter. Given your situation, <laughs> you find being an outlaw with the possibility of great riches under the threat of the Empire's noose a risk worth considering, if the riches are large enough, which they are. As a crewman on a pirate ship, you are not paid in wages, but with one share of the profit, same as every crewman. The captain gets two shares for the strategic decisions he makes, the quartermaster one and one half for his labors, the surgeon one and one fourth, same for the carpenter. Though we do often have difficulty finding surgeons with the right personality matrix. So if there is no surgeon, the carpenter will be surgeon. Oh. Shocking, I know. Such flat and equal compensation is not what you can hear the sawing in the background. Oh. Ships, where captains and officers are compensated richly and get special quarters and privileges over the crew. On a pirate ship, we are all equals achieving a common goal. Wow, what great guys pirates are. Such camaraderie. No, this is not because we are better and the Empire worse, but again, economic inevitability. Empire and merchant ships are not owned by the men who sail them, but by monarchs or investors who hire captains and officers to run them. To ensure loyalty to the owners above crew, the captain is not only paid much more, but has a share in the ship's profits, which the men do not, and may be granted titles and land upon his successful return. Meanwhile, the crew, hired from the mass of men with lives of quiet desperation and personality matrices constraining them inside the law, have only the low price of their undifferentiated labor to offer, and being inside the law, their captains can threaten them with corporal punishment on board, with prison or treason off board, backed by the Empire and her resources to track down traitors and deserters. But for us pirates, captains' orders are but the words of one man. 
Outside the law, a majority can take control at any time by force. It is only our contract that eases this transition. And, at every port, if a man trusts not the contract or the crew, he can just leave. There is no pirate empire to track him down. We have a ship and a business only by our cooperation and only if we can keep it. But the incentive is great. We are not here to sell our labor to distant and disinterested owners, but to taste the fruit of our labors directly, to make money. A lot of money for all of us. The only thing standing in our way, aside from our customers occasionally, is the subtractor of costs. If it grows too large, the business will inevitably dissolve and we won't get paid. These costs come in mostly two forms, ship repairs and people repairs. For the ship, the rules of supply and demand work against us. We can't <coughs> sail into a port of the Empire seeking repairs without raising questions. So we must only visit pirate-friendly ports with pirate-friendly dock workers, mostly far away in the New World, which raises repair costs considerably. For pirates, each broken mast or cannon hole is more costly than for the Empire. So, for business reasons, we prefer not to fight. Also, fighting incurs personnel costs, since we know that some crew will be injured in battle, permanently, and it's just a roll of the cosmic dice as to who and to what. The contract we decide on lists generous compensation for lost legs, arms, hands, eyes. Thus, after the treasure is seized, the injured are compensated, the ship is repaired, supplies replenished, the remainder is profit, the glorious glorious profit, and your one share, after one successful voyage with us, will be worth years of labor with the Empire. So, are you compelled to join? Yes. I'd like to hear from the captain. Mm -hmm. So no matter which one you watch first, they always mm -hmm. implore you right. to look at the other one. So pretty much, yeah. Um, Honestly, like, both, both of their pitches, like, I feel like if I was actually born in that time period where, like, you know, the pirates were, yeah, like the they were in the movies the peak and shit. Of privateering, yeah. yeah that was... I, I, if I had been given the opportunity at some point to join a pirate crew, I might have actually leapt on that. Despite the fact that I'm not really a person that takes a lot of risks today, back then I probably would have been bored as shit, and that would have sounded like fucking a good time to me <laughs> like well like, if I, I get hung i don't have to be <clears throat> bored anymore otherwise i get fucking rich like, yeah basically well and and the thing is or i die at sea in some horrible way but either way i don't have to be bored anymore so. yeah well it the whole thing with uh, the new world as well is that you know you sail to the new world with your riches you pretty much have a head start over pretty much everyone else who arrived there and, yeah, it, it's the benefits of being a pirate over being, you know, a cog in the machine of, like, a, of a merchant ship, that's a lot more appealing. Because the merchant ship, don't get me wrong, you know, could be stable work, could be steady work, but there's also the chance that pirates could come along. And if your captain is an unruly asshole and the majority of the crew agrees with him, Next thing you know, you're stuck on there and you're going to get tortured and all that because your captain doesn't know when to take a hint. Yeah. That's when Boop. you that's when you mutiny. Well, you can try and mutiny, which at that point, you know what I would do? I would literally like crawl up to the front of the ship and I would literally be like waving a white flag while everyone else was down on the other side of the ship just like, "What the hell are you doing?" He's like, "I y'all ain't dying for y'all. Fuck this shit." And then that's everyone when, else That's when they pull out their musket and shoot you in the back. That was a bad thing. Probably. That's the that's the shitty part is you're kind of in a lose lose situation and that's why I'm also more likely to be on the side of the pirates like because at least with a pirate it's like as long as I have the opportunity to fight for my life I have the opportunity to possibly escape like the noose. Yeah. But if I'm a fucking you know regular sailor for the queen on a queen ship and my captain is an asshole and decides we're gonna fight for the fucking booty like you know. I either get to fight and probably get killed and tortured by pirates, or I get to get shot by my captain whenever I fucking turn against him, and or hung for treason whenever we return to port. So yeah. it's a very lose-lose situation. In that yeah. Aspect. So so being a pirate is a more appealing endeavor. I feel like it is actually. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in like multiple ways. Well, 
there's one part in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, you know, where you're actually a pirate. Like, there's parts of that game where you're, like, sailing on the high seas. Of course, you just, don't use the tactics he was describing on the captain's video in Black Flag, really. You kind of just roll on up and guns blazing well, on everybody. Well, keep in mind, well, they had to simplify the combat. Kick, for it's cinematic, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, well, then you kick the shit out of everybody until they give up, you know. It's <clears> not that, like... Uh, you're not rolling in, dropping your flag, and having ships be like, "Oh shit, please, oh, here, take all our stuff." Oh well, yeah, like, well, a, a, they all fight for their stuff. I would love stuff. to see a more realistic pirate game. Like, don't get me I wrong, just feel like right? the action pack battles are part of making a video game fun too. Well, so, yeah, yeah, it, true. it depends on how you do it. I well, guess, so. well, it's it's all about how they make it fun. But there's parts of that game where you're literally on that ship and you're sailing. You got the full wind in your sails, and then all of a sudden the crew starts singing. They're like singing, oh, Billy Riley, oh, Billy Riley. Yeah. It's just like, you're just I like. I love the shanties. Yeah, that, that's like one of my favorite things. Just you're sitting there, and the boys start singing, and you're just what like. What do you oh, do with a drunken sailor? What, what do we gonna do, do with a drunken sailor? sailor? What we gonna do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, it it's some of the best, like, cinematic feeling like, in video games I've ever had. Yeah. But, yeah, this whole, like. This whole thing about pirates. I probably would have been a pirate because uh, I actually found this out from my grandmother the other day. If I was told I, the truth about how shit worked at some point. Yeah. Like, I could have possibly been ignorant and, you know, just been like, oh, we got to obey the law, man. You'll get hung if you For queen and country. Why would you want to go be a pirate? But, like, if I've had someone tell me, it's like, explain to me, like, these two dudes just did, like, these two fictional characters, like, CGP dudes did, you know? Yeah. If I had that explained to me and I had a chance to think about it, I feel like I would have been like, being a pirate sounds better. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck it... this shit. I'm joining you guys. <laughs> but, okay. I actually yeah. didn't know that all pirates were, like, that fair. Like, they don't make it out like it's all that fair to, uh... Keep in mind... Pirates have mutinies the... and shit, too. Like, in yes, the fantasy, do. like... Well, uh, that's if the captain versions. does not want to give up his power. Yeah. And if there's a... But you also have, like, some crazy fucking, like, over-the-top captain characters and stuff that just, like, get, like, drunk with their power and shit. Yeah, like, like um, Blackbeard and... Yeah. You know, you like, hear about... You hear about certain, like... Like, uh, what was his name? Uh, Calico Jack. You hear about a bunch of these crazy assholes who were just, like... They didn't care... They just didn't want to give up their power, and yeah. they were like abandoned on these islands and marooned there because the crew left them there. It's like, yeah, kind of deserved it. I mean, some dudes like because I mean, Blackbeard apparently would take like he would like light cannon fuses and tie them in his beard, so he would like run around with like smoke and like cinders pouring out of his beard. As yeah, he fought people. <laughs> well, he intimidation was a big thing with Blackbeard. He, whenever he dealt with a crew. He would always send one or a few back to like the th to tell the story, like the one who was like the most frightened, and yeah, the rest like of said, them. Branding. Yeah, and the rest of them he would usually like turn loose on civilized places and just be like, "Be thankful that you're still alive, and if you wish to join up, you can. But if you go back to the if you go back to the queen, you're more than likely going to hang. I mean, that's how I mean, he operated. I just don't know if I want to fight that guy. I'd be like, you see that dude with his beard's on fire." Yeah, I don't, want to, I don't want to fight him. Yeah. Yeah, I could see him, like, up on the mizzen mast up front. Just like, there they be, boys! Take the booty! Well, not to mention, when they raise their freaking skull and crossbow and flag, and, like, you're working on that fucking ship out and... Scrubbing the, the poop nowhere, deck. Like, yeah, having a shitty fucking Swamp time making, deck. like, chump change. And as big of an edge lord as I am, when I saw that shit, I'd be like, that's fucking bitching. Yeah, hey, you'd want. be like looking at one of the cannon. <laughs> I like, want in on that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like below deck looking at one of the can. You like all of a sudden you hear the bell up top. Pirates! Pirates attacking! You look at the thing, you'd see the black flag go up. You'd be like, I want to do that. <laughs> you like, you're like, you're like look at, you look down at your like prop wooden cannon. You look back up at that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like I think I'm gonna join them. Yeah, I'm gonna go lock myself in the brig. <laughs> like literally, they jump on board and they'd be like, so. Which one of you is going to tell me where you've hidden all the booty? You know, and I'm guess it's going to be like, I have one question for you first. Are all those guns real? I. <laughs> so it's in the barrels under the deck, and uh, can I can I join up with you, please? Like, yeah, look. yeah, exactly. It's like, like, cause look at my gun. Like, look at my gun. It's fucking made out of wood. Like, it doesn't yeah. even fire anything. Like, yeah. I, I at best I could maybe drop it on your head from like you know. 
at, like at, above deck or something. Yeah, like. at best I could fire like a musket through the through like the back of it or something. Like that's it. That's what would be the point? Yeah, exactly. There's no. It's like you guys have real cannons. I want to join you guys. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are cool. All your guns are real. <laughs> All right. Well, this was uh, how to be a pirate. Uh, by CGP Gray. If you want to see the original videos, links are in the description down below. If you want to see more from Gray, you can actually click the name, uh, his name in the title of the video. And I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. Micah. I am Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.